G'day guys and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're gonna talk about your Buckmaster. You've just bought it and you wanna put it together. So it actually surprises me that people don't know how to put together their shotguns considering they're very, very similar to pretty much 99% of straight pull and or leave release shotguns in the way it comes to assembly. However, you know, people have been doing it wrong so I thought I'd throw this video out there just so you do it right and you don't wreck it. So um, I've got the gun straight out of the box and this is how it's gonna come. So generally speaking, you are gonna have your gas piston up inside the housing that, that comes out of. This one is a 20 inch barrel version with the, you know, wank factor on front. So you'll get it like that. You'll have your barrel nut in a separate bag and then your gun will come like this. Now, point to note, this thing here is a rubber stopper so that the cardboard box doesn't get pushed over the cocking handle. You do not shoot the gun with that on. You will look like an idiot, which I have seen many people do. As soon as it's out of the box, take that off and get rid of it. You've got your gun, if that's on, which it shouldn't be, but if that's on, you would take that off and then pull forward on your hand grip, place that to the side. Now, on the gun itself, we have this nut here. Now that's the barrel locking nut, as opposed to some shotguns where the end cap nut is the barrel locking nut. So on this one, we have a separate barrel locking nut. So we're just gonna take that off. Now, with some of these style of shotguns, you would cock the working parts fully rearwards before you put the barrel on, um, and that would help you seat. These ones are slightly different. Now, before we even get into doing that, I need to talk to you about the anatomy of the gun. If you take your gas piston out, up inside here, which is gonna be hard for you guys to see, but believe me, there's one in there. Right up in there is a rubber O-ring. Now, that's to stop gas from porting forwards out of here and ensure that the gases go backwards onto your piston and drive the working parts rearwards. If you wreck that o-ring your gun may experience some sort of sluggish running particularly with the lighter shells so you don't want to damage that. Now what can happen because this is dry from the factory and or has a very light film of oil on it it is not lubricated enough to jump over the square cut threads on your magazine tube. You will wreck the rubber o-ring and if you find yourself really having to push hard on the barrel it's probably because the rubber o-ring is causing you too much friction. So we want to lubricate that first. Now what lubrication are we going to use? I would say steer clear of anything that is a CLP type so a cleaner lubricant protector and or anything that's got a cleaning detergent in the oil. The reason being it's a rubber component. The cleaners over time can degrade the rubber and once the rubber fucks out then you no longer have a rubber o-ring in your gun and you'll experience issues with that gun. So, an alternative to oil is grease. On all shotguns, I do not use oil uh, because I find that oil is just a bit of a pain in the ass. It doesn't really stay where you want it to stay and lubricate the parts that you want it to lubricate. Um, and then when you don't have enough lubrication in the gun, it will run like shit. The carbon will stick in areas that you don't want it to stick into, and etc, etc. There's many other reasons why you would not want to use oil in a shotgun. So, we're gonna be using lithium grease. And what's the cheapest and easiest way of getting lithium grease? Go to your auto parts store and buy something like that. Now that's King Chrome branded. You don't have to buy King Chrome branded. You just have to buy lithium grease. What does lithium grease look like? It can be white or it can be a brown color um, depending on some of the additives in it. So I prefer lithium grease. You can use graphite grease like molybdenum grease. Molly grease is commonly known. You would probably put that in the wheel bearings in four wheel drive, that style of grease. Now the benefit of molly grease is it actually absorbs carbon that is produced by nitrocellulose. Now nitrocellulose is smokeless powder. That is what is fired in these guns. So what it can actually do is it pulls in the carbon into that grease and the graphite helps hold it in suspension and therefore it does not stick to the moving parts of your gun. Graphite grease is awesome. Graphite grease is used on such things as a M242 25 millimeter Bushmaster chain gun that's used by the Navy and the Army. So if it's good enough for a 25 mil, it's good enough for your shotgun. But if you don't want to use Molly Grease, you can just use Lithium Grease, which is what I use. You buy one tub of this, it's cost you like $15, and that will last you for the lifetime of the gun. It's pretty good. If you go to a gun shop and buy Lithium Grease or Gun Grease, it's going to cost you $30 for something about the size of a bottle of Loctite. Um, it's gonna last you fuck all. They oversell that shit, just go and buy some good old standard lithium grease. Now, back to what we were talking about, the rubber o-ring. So, we're gonna get a tiny dab of this. Now, it's not much, about that much. 
that's probably even a little bit too much. Now what we're going to do is through the front here, we're just going to smear a little bit of grease on the O-ring. Think about the O-ring like a bum hole. If you're going near the ring, use lube. So now that we have greased that up, put your gas piston back in your barrel extension, or you can put it straight on the magazine. It doesn't really matter. My preference is that. Now, if we put this on, barrel extension is sitting down in between the two rails of the action bar. Now, as I said before, if you cock it like some of the other guns, let's say it was cocked like that, that barrel extension is gonna hit the top of the action bar and it won't seat correctly. So, working parts forward, start to seat the barrel. Now we can see that our rubber O-ring is now jumping our threads. Because we've lubricated it, it will slide straight over. Cock the gun as you pull back. Now, if you release the working parts and just let it slam, it will push the barrel forwards. Now, if the barrel extension is seated flush with the receiver, it's seated correctly. If I release that under spring tension, it will throw the barrel forward. So don't do that. Pull the barrel back, hold it with your fingers, and then just slowly release the spring. Now, if I just take my fingers off that, it will slightly slide forwards because we haven't got our locking nut on. We can hold it like this, just a little bit of tension back on the cocking handle just to bring the, the tension back off this. Now with your locking nut, you have a detent plunger that's spring loaded on one side, right there. We also have these little divots on the front of the gas system. The detent goes towards the divots, funnily enough. All right, so we're gonna screw this all the way on. Now you don't have to go stupid tight, so just a bit of a honk. You don't have to use any sort of grips or anything. Um, eventually, if it's not tight enough, the barrel can walk out and then you'll have fail to fire. If you're having fail to fire and the barrel is not flush with the receiver, that's the issue, just screw your barrel on tighter. All right, so now to put this handguard on, because of the way this works, all right, you have your little mechanism in here for your release. See how it comes in like that. And what that grabs on is that corner of the action bar. So if we try to slide this on with the working parts forwards, it won't go on properly. So, all right, so what we need to do is gonna hold those working parts back again. We're gonna get this. Now there is a closely fitted sleeve in there and that can hit on the end. So if it's not going on, look for that. Slide it down, give it a little wiggle and press. So pushing the, hand, the grip up towards the barrel is actually gonna help you a little bit and you're sort of over extending it. That'll come down. So now you can see it's not quite sitting in there. You give it a bit of a wiggle. It's gonna seat down in that correctly. We'll put our barrel nut on. All right, so now the working part's being held rearwards by that button. So there you go, there's putting your shotgun together. Now, you can do that an easy way by not holding that. If you were to have the action fired before you tried to do that, once the hammer is forward, it will trip the mechanism so that when you cock it, it'll stay locked rearwards like that. And then that makes it a little bit easier to do all the stuff up the front. Or you can just put it into your hip and hold the cocking handle either way. It doesn't really matter, you're still achieving the same thing. All right, so let's pull this apart now. All right, barrel nut off, hand guard off. All right, working parts, we can probably just put them forwards. We don't really need to have them held rearwards. Take off our barrel nut. All right, so while we've got this apart and I've got the grease out, let's actually just talk about how to clean and service one of these guns. Let's talk about the barrel first. So we've already put a little bit of grease up inside on our rubber O-ring. You can put a smear of grease onto um, your piston. Now, grease is good for gas pistons because oil, because it's so thin in its viscosity, as soon as it fires, it can blow it straight out of the gun. The first time I ever fired a Buckmaster was a Gen 1. They just hit the market and this was, you know, every year ago, whenever they first hit the market. And um, this guy rocked up at the range and he had one. I was like, hey man, can I shoot that? He's like, yeah man. And he just lubricated it. So I'm standing there at the firing point, got the gun up, bang. And holy shit, did it eject some fucking oil out of the gas system straight into my eyes. Um, so that is not good because CLP is quite toxic. If you read the uh, labels on CLP uh, from the manufacturers, you actually find out how much toxins are in that oil, uh, which is why I generally try to steer clear of it. Um, yeah, grease on your gas piston is always a good thing. Just a very light smearing. You don't need to cake things up with grease. 
the idea being is the grease is more sticky, it will stick to the parts unlike oil which will heat up and then come off. So a light smearing and put it back in. All right, so if you want to take your bolt out to do some servicing, all you need to do is if you hold the working parts slightly rearwards, about there, and you push the bolt body forwards, you will see this little tiny half moon on top of the bolt. We'll line it with the center of the bolt handle. Trying to do this to face you is quite hard. Just pull it up and out. That was rather difficult to get on camera because uh, normally I would do it down in my hip. Um, so there you go, cocking handle comes out. Now all that's held in by is you can see, put up against the white there, that little groove. Uh, is a little detent ball that's going to pin that in place. And we'll look at that on the actual bar in a second. On the Gen 1s, see that little hole in the bottom? That's the detent plunger. So it goes from a different direction on a Gen 1 than on a Gen 2. So here's a little tidbit of information for you. All right, so then we slide all this junk off of the gun. Now this is our bolt, bolt locking lug, extractor, firing pin, and we have two pins that hold it all together firing pin retention pin, and the extractor retention pin on the bottom there. Do we need to lubricate anything on our bolt? Not really. Potentially a little bit on the bottom where it interacts with the action bar because between unlocking, which is there, and locking, which is there, that's the only movement the bolt does. So if the part isn't moving, you don't really need to lubricate it. Now this doesn't actually have any friction with anything else in the firearm. You have a groove cut out on the side here for your ejector post, which is on your barrel extension, but the ejector post doesn't really ride much, so a very, very light film of oil, or just leave it dry, would suffice. Nothing else on, the, on that needs to get lubricated. Where all the friction for this type of shotgun comes from is from your action bars and where they ride inside the receiver. So we're gonna take, you don't have to take that off, but I'm just gonna take that off just so I can show you up inside here. You can see there's cutouts in here, and if we put this action bar back on, you will see where it goes inside. Now there's rails all the way up inside the receiver. That's where your friction comes from. That's where you need to lubricate. Now because it's very hard to get your fingers up inside there, um, it's easier just to pull that out and lubricate the sides of the rails. There is a little bit of friction on the bottom from where the hammer rides, and then where the little shell lifter thingamadoodle hits there. You'll notice in my videos I don't really give all of the part names for these because every company calls it a different name. Because I work on so many different guns, I just don't bother committing it to memory, so I just call them the thingamajigamadoodle things. Um, unless I'm talking to a customer on the phone, and then I will go and get the schematic and talk, call, call it the correct name. Anywho, back to that. So you would just lubricate the side of the rails before you put it back in, and that's about it. Now, the other thing that we should talk about is your trigger mech. Now, for normal maintenance, you don't really have to touch the trigger mech. You don't need to lubricate it. Do not fill it with oil, um, because you're just gonna allow dirt to stick to it. It's designed to be left dry. Now, the housing is plastic. So between plastic and metal, the plastic being more of a nylon material is almost self-lubricating, so you don't actually need to lubricate it. And by lubricating, you can introduce dirt and grime into the trigger mech, which will break it. But I'm just gonna quickly pull that out so that um, you know we can see how that's done. Super easy on a Buckmaster, it's a single pin. So this is a bench block. They're like 20 bucks from a gun shop. I'll use a bench block. I'll just get a piece of wood with a hole drilled in it because that's just where we're gonna punch the pin through. So I'm just gonna sit that behind the gun. All right, and I've got a punch that you can buy from pretty much any hardware store. That's a Stanley. Um, that's a 532nd or a four millimeter. That's about the size you need and a very small, cheap hammer. Now I'm gonna move the camera. All right, now you can see what I'm doing. So we've aligned where this pin's gonna come out with that center hole. That's why you want the hole there. Put that there. And if we just give it a light tap, that it comes straight through. You could almost do that without the hammer. All right, pull the pin out. There's our pin. And then we grab this and pull it out of the receiver. Now, word of warning, make sure it's on safe when you do this, because if you accidentally pull the trigger and drop the hammer without the bolt in there, you will wreck your trigger mech. And that is mooey not good. All right, trigger mech comes out like that. So now you can get in there and clean that out. You will get debris and shit up inside there. Um, make sure you clean it. So that's super easy. You can even just get brake cleaner and just spray a bit in there just till the crap comes out. 
get a bit of a rag, wipe it, and um, Bob's your uncle. Grime does come up underneath your shell latch uh, and your shell latch trip there. You can spray stuff up in there to clean that out. You don't really need to take that out. Just give it a brush and make sure there's not crap underneath it. As I said, with your trigger mech, you don't really need to do much with it. So just give it a pull out and make sure it's all functioning correctly, make sure the pins are seated, which they are, and that's about it. Um, if you do need to drop your hammer for whatever reason for cleaning, um, take it off safe, put your thumb on the hammer, pull the trigger, and then release it under tension forwards like that. If you allow it to drop without riding it, you will break the frame, and then you'll have to send it back. Don't do that. So there you go. So to put it all back together, gonna put that in there. Get our pin, and I can just push that in by hand, and now that is in the assembled position. We're gonna put that bad boy back on. It does have two little nipples on it that'll line up with two little holes in the receiver. We're gonna get our return spring and put that on. Now, you don't really need to lubricate that either. Um, a little bit of, like a very light form of grease on this magazine outer will actually help you. If you put too much oil and crap in there, you will get dirt stuck to it and it will actually gouge up your magazine tube. So a very light film of grease on there. You don't really need to grease the spring. You just need to make sure it's kept clean and then you know, periodically take it out and make sure it's not getting, getting rust on it. If you rust a spring, that's when it will fail. Let's say you have a little pit mark right where my thumb is. That pit mark will eat away at the metal. That now becomes a stress riser. And when this goes under compression repetitively and under the force of firing, you will break your springs. These will eventually wear out. All shotguns do it. Uh, eventually this will wear, wear down enough that there's not enough tension to return the working parts at the correct velocity to chamber correctly. So just be aware that, you know, eventually you will need to replace this spring. Don't worry about it. It's just a thing. Not everything in a gun is designed to last forever. And these springs are definitely one of them. Right, so that goes on there. We're gonna get our action bar and our bolt. Now, as I said, a little bit of grease on the bottom. Put that on there. A little bit of grease on the rails themselves. And I'm trying to do this for the camera. We're gonna slide that onto there. All right, pulling back enough that we can line up where our cocking handle goes. And we're gonna place our cocking handle back in until it clicks. And now that will retain itself within the action. So now that we're at that point, if we were gonna completely reassemble it as per what I just showed you before, or if we're gonna leave it, you know, split because you wanna put it in a bag or back in your safe without the barrel on or whatever, then you would go on with that as well. I hope you got something out of that. I feel like uh, that's a, a good bit of information to have. Um, and that goes for pretty much every other shotgun. Slight variations in disassembly, but they're all relatively the same. Most of the shotguns are, 90% similar. So there you go. Hope you got something out of that. I will see you next video and hooray.